this month's product office hours is all around the scorecard. Um, if you got to attend last month, that was on the feedback. Um, if you haven't watched it, it's on our YouTube page or I can send it out. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing that. Um, but oh, yeah. There's a lot of great questions in that one. A lot of great ideas. I like that was a good session. It was a really good session. Um, we ended up going over because of it, which was, I, I think, really time well spent, honestly. We got to spend more time together, Christy. That's how I look at, look at it. Exactly. Um, great. And then just one call out before I move on. If you guys aren't using 90 yet, um, you can go to our website and sign up. If you go to 90.io, yeah, sign up, 30-day free trial. Let's do it. Um, so first agenda introduction to the couple of us that are on the call. Um, we'll go, do an overview of the scorecard as it is right now in 90. Um, and then we're gonna go over some coming soon features. Some are just add-ons to the 90 product that are completely free, some we're developing. So there'll be things like goal forecasting, being able to see your weekly measurables at like a four and a 13 week interval, um, being able to have formulas in here. So this isn't the exclusive list, but I'm feeling during IDS, it'll be a lot of, that's a great idea, let's go back and think about it, or, oh, let's, that's coming soon. So there might be a lot of that discussion, but in IDS, still really open um, to hearing feedback you guys have, questions you, you guys have as we're going through that. Um, so that's why we're all here today. Yeah, Christine, this is an important topic too, because I know uh, with my clients, uh, some of them are really strong in this category from the, from the get-go, you know, that they, they're, you know, that come in, they're 60% strong there, but some of them really struggle uh, to figure out how to get to a scorecard they can really rely on. You know, they're, they're 10, 20% strong and yeah. it can take time. So having a really great tool is a, is, a, is a great way to help them move along the path. Yeah, I mean, even our scorecard at 90, it's, it's seen um, an evolution over the years. So yes. sometimes measurables make sense, sometimes they got to roll off. So we can talk about all that today too. Rationalization, it's always, it's always a good idea. So yes. that sounds good. Um, so first quick intro to me, I'm Christine Watts, head of client success and product here at 90. Um, so my main role here is to show you guys what we have now with a quick demo, talk about where we're going in the future and field those sort of questions. And then we've also got Jim here, EOS implementer from Impact Architects. So I'll let you do a quick intro to yourself as well. Yeah. So we're part, I'm part one of the, the, the broad, uh, diaspora of, of EOS implementers around the world uh, that are really try, trying to help coach and train and facilitate uh, companies through implementing EOS in, in a pure fashion. And, you know, for all my clients, all my clients use 90. So uh, uh, I'm always excited to hear what Christine has to come up with. And those of you on the call that are enjoying the 90 tools, give a shout out to Christine because almost everything that goes right in the tool is really her. So uh, Christine, thanks so much for, uh, for setting us up and making us look smart. When Nothing it comes to that goes wrong is my fault. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. okay, well done. <laughs> Great. And then we've also got Michelle here too. Um, she's going to be picking up the questions that you guys ask in the chat. So as we're going through the product, write in questions in that chat area. She's going to be there grabbing them and putting them onto our IDS list. So don't feel like you got to save them for the end. Go ahead and put them in right away as soon as they come up. Yeah, guys, I got to give you a shout out, Christine and Michelle, because uh, I actually talked to an EOSI this last week and said, hey, I hadn't thought about that as a great way to run a session. So they're going to start doing that all the time now when they, they do coaching sessions of all different types. Just grab everything, put it in the issues list, wait till the end. So that's well love done. it. Yeah. Nice. All right, next. So first thing, overview of the scorecard. So that means I am leaving my slide deck and we're going into 90. Um, so that's where I'll spend the next couple minutes here. And we're going to be on this data page. So. If you guys are using the software, you probably know um, this data page is really where your scorecard lives. And then it also is gonna show up in your level 10 meeting. So if you're gonna to go in and run a meeting, this same information, how it works and acts is all gonna show up in the meeting, just in that meeting agenda. So the, for the purposes of today, I'll just stay on the data page since it works the same way, whether you're in the meeting or not. Um, First thing I'll call out is we do have a couple different tabs on here. So you can track your measurables at any sort of interval that you'd like to. Obviously weekly is gonna be your most common. That's where you've got your basic scorecard that you're really looking at during your level 10 meeting. So in order to create a measurable on here, all you do is use the plus sign. We wanna do create and add a new measurable. I'll go over this option in a second. Um, but when we do create a new measurable, it's saying, what do we want to track? So if I want to track 
you know, client calls, I put that in. Maybe in the description, I wanna put where I'm actually pulling that number from. So if we use HubSpot, let's put a link to HubSpot where it's coming from. And it's really just gonna help create consistency on where the data is coming from for the rest of the team. Well, and, and Christine, you know, we do this all the time where it's actually great information. Like, wait, where does that number come from? And so everyone can really understand it. And that's really the point. It's in the L10 so everyone can understand it and know whether it's on track or off track. And, and you know, having having a, a, a great description really makes it it's easier to keep everybody really clear on it. Because otherwise you're like, I don't know. And then it's not data anymore. It's just a distraction. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, and with the details in there, it really helps you know, hey, here's here's what our weekly goal is. Here's what we're trying to achieve. You can decide what type of number it is. So something like, you know, number of phone calls, you're probably sticking with just a plain number, but you've got some other options in here. Like if you want to track a dollar. So we've just got a couple different currency options in here. Um, we also have percentage that you can use. We just added the ability to have a yes, no. So is something getting done or is it not getting done? Just simply select yes or no for the given week. And then you also have a time option there. So if you wanted, like for us, we've got a live chat down here. We're tracking response time, you know, average response time each week. So we can make sure we're getting back to people quickly. Um, once you have that selected, tell us really what is success with that goal? Is it greater than the number, less than, equal to? Um, so you have those couple options in here and you even have min and maxes. So if you're in a situation where you're like, hey, it'd be great to be between three and six or outside of three and six, you can have that range within here. So it'll still show up as within the goal within a certain range. And then the final thing you're looking at is the owner. You can also select the owner up here in the top left. The drop downs here do the same thing, but you're looking at it two different ways. Up here, we're actually looking at all of the accountability chart seats. And so it's a way to say, all right, well, if we're tracking client calls, we probably need a sales position. So that's gonna be Monica who owns the measurable and you can see it auto filled those in. This is just taking the reverse approach. Hey, I already know like this is Michelle. I don't need to look at the accountability chart. I'm just gonna select it. And then if I wanted to attach it to her seat as well, I can. So once your measurable is created, it shows up on this list. Your second option on here is adding an existing measurable. So this is really helpful if you've got multiple teams set up in your account. So if you've got a leadership team and then a sales team and you wanna track that same client calls number on both, all you have to do is click add existing measurable. This is gonna be a list of all the things you already track and that way it's gonna pull in this number and you're not gonna to have to worry about you know, putting the number in five different places even though it's gonna be the same thing. You can have the same measurable across the board. They probably enter in the number on their My90 page and then it just shows up on any scorecard that it's a part of. And that's a really important, uh, Christine, because uh, I, I really I teach all my clients to use to to take advantage of the fact that you can build teams and and projects and you know like I say that and that team is going to have a meeting. Let's make sure we're looking at the right numbers for that team and just be able to grab them from other places uh, and pick up the right information because that's 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 the thing. If you're going to spend that five minutes during the L10 looking at data, make sure it's actually the right data. And gosh, it saves so much time. You don't have to go, go searching for it. It's all right there. Exactly. And I know a lot of people use that function too, where maybe you just have an admin team set up and maybe I'm not the one entering my measurables each week, but I just want to have a whole separate team where only the admins have access to it. And they can just go in and populate all the numbers there and it'll flow onto the scorecards. So that's one way to like kind of maintain some security. I don't want to share my whole leadership team scorecard, but I want that specific number filled in. Just put right. it on a scorecard that that person has access to. That's right. That's right. Um, let's see where to go next. So once I've got my measurables on here, you can see I have a couple orange lines on here. Um, that's just allowing you to add some breaks on your scorecard. You probably won't need too many since this is typically just like, you know, what, 15 measurables or so. So it probably wouldn't be too long of a list. But if How you- How long is 90s, Christine? Actually, that's a great question. I think we're over 15. <laughs> we're over 15, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely are. We need Nobody to perfect. help us with that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe you got a category of like client success, finance, you know, if you've got anything you want to group together, it's just a helpful way to kind of like segment and break things up. Yeah. I mean, in, in certain times of change, we, we often coach our, our clients to, uh, 
to take on more measurables than, than they had before or try some measurables. I'm trying a new thing. So I want to track this very closely. So having those things, so you, you know, and these are, these are things that are look about this thing. And then maybe I want to, you know, as a general rule, Hey, I got five of them. I want to get down to one uh, at some point when I, when I, when I trust it, or you're looking at three, which is the one that's most predictable. So it's a great way to, to be able to, to keep everyone's mind really clear and focused and not have to rethink it. And because a big, table like an like this full of numbers can be uh hard on on the on the royal brain uh yes. on, a, on, a, on a monday morning so it's good to have it have it broken up like that and that's a great point about hey maybe we do want to spend the next couple of weeks looking really closely at these five things put them all on here you don't have to keep them there forever so the reason that we have this my 90 page set up with your measurable on it is so that i can always be tracking the things that i'm responsible for these don't have to live on a scorecard. So I could be tracking those five items here, entering my numbers each week. We decide we wanna pull them into the scorecard for a couple of weeks in a row. When we don't want them anymore, all we have to do is remove it from the scorecard. So this doesn't delete the measurable entirely. It just says, hey, I don't need to see it here anymore. Maybe it still lives on another team or just on that person's my 90 page. Yeah, as we teach, 100% strong means everybody has a measurable uh, or, or a couple measurables. And, you know, it's great to, you know, figure out what are the things that help you know whether you won the week, the month, the quarter. So, um, and having it all kind of roll up into the right views, that's powerful. Definitely. Um, let's go look at a couple setting things that we have set up right now, because as we start looking to the right, you'll see a couple things. We've got this average and total column. We actually have some color coding over here. So if you don't see those in your account right now, you would actually want to come up to the settings icon up here in the top right. And when you click on that, you've got a couple toggles here. So the average and the total column, self-explanatory, they show up right next to the goal. And this is gonna auto-calculate based on the number of weeks you're looking at right now. So if I were to change this dropdown, those numbers would change based on the amount of data that I'm looking at at a given time. Next, you've got the status color indicator. So that's this red, yellow, green over here on the left-hand side. That's telling me based on the last three weeks, Am I on track for all three in a row? Am I off track with all three in a row red? Or maybe I just missed one or two. So that would be that yellow indicator. So a lot of times we use that in order to say, all right, you know, we were off track, but you know, it's still yellow. We still hit the last two weeks. So let's wait. Whereas red, maybe we want to make that an issue right now. All of these you can right click on and you can either turn them into do's or make issues out of them. And then at least you get, hey, here's the last three weeks of data. Here's what the goal should have been. You can really easily transition that to your issues list. Yeah, it's a good, it's it's a, because the default is if it's not on track, you drop it to the bottom, right? Uh, as I te teach all my clients to how to say drop it to the bottom, because you're going to want to talk about it right here, but don't yeah. do it. All the data, the context goes with you down to the, in the issues list. So, uh, so grab it and go. Yeah. And then this one is great if you're in a situation where maybe your weekly meeting is on a Wednesday or something, you know, that's maybe off kilter from your normal week, you could track your data. Hey, I only want to look at everything from Wednesday to Tuesday. So instead of in the calendar week, you can kind of adjust that based on your meeting schedule. I will say this is for the company as a whole. So when you choose something like this, it's not just controlling this specific scorecard because your measurables can be on multiple teams. You know, you want to have that data consistency where if you're tracking one measurable in the middle of the week, you want to track them all that way. So it's just the decision of, you know, do you want to start your weeks on Sunday, Monday, or in the middle of the week? And then this toggle lets you see your current. Um, so a lot of people will have this off because we're looking at our past week. You know, let's say our meeting's Monday morning. We want to look at everything beyond that. We don't really need to see an empty column showing this week's data. Um, some people leave that on, you know, maybe your meetings on a Friday and you track things incrementally. So somebody goes in and puts in the number every single day. You know, I don't know, everybody's a little bit different in that regard, but it's just kind of an option. Do you want to see it? Do you not want to see it? Um, so we made it a toggle there. You can see it just opens and closes it really easily. So Christine, I think uh, some people missed how to put one of those orange uh, breaks in there. Do you want to, while we're sitting right here, let me look. Good question, because I don't think I showed that. Um, all you do is click. So instead of the drag and drop, there's a little icon right below. So if you click on that, it shows up. And then the same way to remove it, um, you would just click on it again and it removes off there too. So you can open that up and close it and you can add it to the top or bottom of items. 
And with these, you can still really easily drag and drop the order around. So it's not like you're gonna mess up that it's attached to that individual order too. Perfect. All right, we're gonna let me know if you're solved. Yeah. And let's see, and a lot of this functionality that I'm talking about works the same way as I transition off of weekly onto monthly, quarterly, annual, as we go over. Um, it's gonna be very consistent. So all of these items I can right click on to make issues. I can click on them like normal to see the details over to the right hand side and change the goals if I needed to. And then with all of these numbers, um, I don't think I even did, did this quite yet, but all you do is just free text entry, type it in, it saves automatically um, when you go in there and it turns red or green just based on the goal you set. If you are gonna have um, you know, a week or a month, like December is a great example where, you know, you've got all of this holiday season. If you have a goal that varies whatsoever, you can edit the goal for that period. So all you do when you hover is click on the little icon that shows up, and then you've got this custom goal entry. So you can type in any sort of number you'd like to here, um, change the orientation if you need to. And then when you save that, it controls the goal for that given week. So this week, is red right now. Let's say we only needed it to be greater than 80. Once we save it, it changes to green. And then when you hover over it, you see the goal versus actual right there. And that's a great, that's a great thing. I mean, it, it being able to visually understand the numbers without having to read them, once again, a great way to get through a lot, a large bunch of data uh, yeah. very quickly. I guess my, my clients that are using uh, these other sections monthly and quarterly, I gotta say that uh, they've appreciated it because otherwise they were they were using fractional numbers in the weekly and uh, and some some numbers make no sense whatsoever in in a weekly approach or it makes infinitely more sense monthly or quarterly so uh, you know it's just but you do have to have the discipline of making sure you check those at the appropriate time uh, you know, every month every quarter you know, like let's look at it at the right at the right moment so we can capture all those issues that might be coming up. Yeah, that's a great point. Like a lot of the specific companies I've talked to about this feature, especially before we released it, it was very much up, you know, our business cycle doesn't work, you know, for these specific numbers where, you know, we only, you know, close a deal once a month or once a quarter because they're at a just different, you know, interval with how right. they're working, where a lot can be weekly and should be weekly, but sometimes like these numbers just make sense for what you need. Yeah, and I think that's it's it's a it's a great benefit to to make it that much easier to to really keep on track. Um, what I what I t tell people is that when they customize the uh, L10 agenda, they just leave a slug in there for checking monthly, checking quarterly, and then they and just and with the thing it says only on the first week of the month or only on the third week of the month or well the you know or whatever. Just so they they know as they're going through and to rethink about it, don't have to remember. It's all it just reminds them as they go through the meeting. Yeah, I love that idea. And with your quarterly numbers, we even have some pre-populated for the leadership team just based on some recommendations. You know, a lot of these might be more of your financial based items. And if you think about your VTO, a lot of these have a lot of relationship to those as well when you're looking at your revenue and your profit type of numbers. And then we've also got the org checkup scores on here as well. So usually I would say this happens, what, once a year, um, I know us for us internally at 90, we do this at least twice a year with our team. Um, but being able to go in, complete your org checkup, um, and then put in the numbers lets you at least see your progress over time. And for all of the default measurables that we have in here, the goal will be TBV until you go in and change it. So feel free to go in and just update the goal when you do see that there. And then annual, same deal. Um, this is the one where we did change it. So, you know, maybe 13 years isn't the right view for you. So we changed it to have a default of five. So you've got your last couple listed in here. Um, and then again, average and total kind of carry on across the board. If you have that turned on, it'll be turned on everywhere. The thing that you can do is sometimes that might not make sense. Like for example, um, a percentage, you don't really need to see a total percent. So what we've done is when you click on one of these items, just choose if you'd like to hide the total there, you know, that number really doesn't mean anything. So we don't need to see it. And, you know, sometimes the more data, not better, you know, right. in a case right. like that. <laughs> um, more confusion than actual information. Yeah, exactly. 
I think that kind of covers everything I wanted to go over on this specific page. Like I said, it works the same way in your level 10 meeting. Um, oh, let's, 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 like, let's go over the changes to the default. Can you change the default for the for the for the weekly view as well? There was a question about that. Oh no, you can't right now. Um, so you can change the number of weeks you're viewing, but you would need to go in and update that each time. So if you end up choosing more, it just lets you scroll to the right. Yeah, so it, it tries to coerce you into being pure, but uh, you don't. But as, as you need to understand things better, you can change it. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I do have like a, it, I'll show you this in my slides. We are looking to update this as a free add-on where you could actually choose a full date range. So instead of being restricted to looking at your current and going past, you could actually select, you know, oh, I just want to go look at my Q4. Um, so that's, I'll actually speak to that in the slides that are coming up, but it will allow some greater flexibility within here too. That'll be super handy for being able to gather those things into quarterly numbers, won't it, Christine? Yes, it will. <laughs> All right. Let me jump back in here. And then in IDS, I'm sure I forgot to go over something. So we can always jump back in to 90 and go over that. So now I want to go over what's coming soon to the scorecard. Um, I write soon and I, I know that's like very vague, but these are things that we're working on this quarter. So I tried to keep it really specific. So in IDS, we might start talking about things that are outside the scope of the quarter that we maybe absolutely still are planning. Um, but this is what we're doing right now. So right now I showed you that you can change the goal for the specific score, extremely helpful. Um, next, we wanna be able to change those goals at scale. Um, so easily change the default goal for scores moving forward. So for example, if I change a goal from 80 to 90, now I, I don't want to affect all of my past weeks. I just want to say, hey, moving forward, all my future weeks are going to be set at 90. So that's what we're looking to set up um, in the coming weeks. Uh, we're also going to have an Excel upload option. So let's say I already know what all of my goals are and how they vary for the entire year. I just want to load those all in at one time. I don't have to worry about changing the goal every single week or every month, however often that may change for you guys. You could just upload an Excel sheet and it would do that for the entire year. So all you have to do is worry about the app. Super powerful for all the all of our users that are growing. And uh, lot, so all the numbers need to change every week. That is that is the goal is it's got to be going up every week. And so, uh, uh, and then you know whether you're on plan or off plan, That's that sounds great. Definitely. Um, yeah, and just to, you know, we'll have a template to make it easy. Um, you know, our team is always open to helping with that sort of upload process as well. Uh, and then even, you know, the sort of thing where maybe you need to change goals at scale. So the ability to download your scorecard, make some tweaks and then re-upload it. So that's the kind of flexibility and change at scale that we're looking to implement um, definitely within the quarter. I should never say definitely, I guess, now that I say that. <laughs> well, I think you've gotten people really used to th things coming fast and, and getting better every week. So uh, yeah. when, I, when I talk when I talk to other USI, it's always like, do you guys like have a new update every day or something like that? Like, oh yeah, they do. Oh, definitely, every day. Every single day. <laughs> Always, um, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Um, this next one is going to be a free add-on to 90, so it'll be something that you turn on specifically in your account, um, but it's the ability to take your weekly measurable and look at it at a different interval. So right now, your, your weekly measurables can't show up on the monthly tab because the data doesn't make sense. You know, four weeks doesn't always equal a month. You're starting your week every Monday. You know, that's never going to really equal all of January if you're looking at, you know, the calendar. Um, I think February, what we're in right now is a perfect month. Yes. For it. So like, that's very exciting and I'm very happy for us, but that will never happen, <laughs> I think, again. So what, what, yeah, three yeah. out of four years, but yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> so so the, this is our solution to that. We're going to take your weekly numbers and we're going to let you have a trailing four week and a trailing 13 week view. Um, so it'll be a new tab on there. Um, it'll take the average or the cumulative for each measurable. So that means, you know, for a percentage, you probably want to see the average over the last four weeks. For a number like client calls, you probably want to see the total over the last four weeks. And that's going to give you a view of your goal versus your actual in a great way because you're looking at maybe a little bit longer of a time span. So it's going to dynamically update based on whatever you type into the weekly section. Um, that'll show up in the trailing four and 13 week area. 
And so that means that trailing four and 13 week area is view only. So you can't edit or change any values. It's just a different view of your weekly measurables. Um, so yeah, here I just kind of wrote it out a little bit clearer. Um, lets you see your weekly measurables as a summer average, it depends on whatever you choose for that individual measurable. And it'll be for that four or 13 week period of time. Yeah, I think Rick, we had some questions from Rick on that particularly, you know, the, and that's the, that is the goal. So rather than looking at it from a, from a monthly view, uh, which is hard to rationalize from a data perspective, that trailing four week is, a, is in place of the monthly view and the 13 week view that's in place of having a quarterly view. Cause it really is, you know, that way you're always looking at it with a rolling quarter, which tends to be the better measurement anyway. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you want to see the weekly data so that you can stay ahead of the numbers. Um, but this just lets you kind of have that average over time that can sometimes be helpful for that perspective, like you said. Um, so this is just a little mock up of it. Um, nothing fancy. You can see you get an extra tab here. You get the four and the 13 week. Um, and my goal is we do have this plus sign so that you can add individual measurables to it. But my goal is just to have it be, okay, whatever's on your weekly scorecard just automatically shows up here unless you manually adjust that. So um, that's what I'm working on with the dev team right now is just making sure that's in practice. You don't have to go through and individually add every single measurable one by one. Um, but yeah, we're pretty close to, to wrapping this up as well. So and that's, is that, and that's um, I mean, so I guess well, that's a great place for people to give feedback is because that's, because people have been asking for the roll up, right? The weekly roll up to monthly, we people want to correlate. And this is the answer to that, right? This is, there isn't no, another approach we're gonna take just so everyone's clear. Like, you know, let us, let us know how this works for you. Cause I think it's, it's a, both from a development perspective and ease of use perspective, it makes more sense. Yeah, uh, but people think may have still thought they wanted something different than that, and it's like this is. But this is this is what we're this is our answer for now. So let us know. It is, yeah, yeah, and I will be curious to hear the feedback um, because when it comes to like putting weekly measurables in that monthly format, everything we came up with was you know we'd be representing the data poorly, um, and so like having you have that data integrity and knowing exactly what you're looking at is really important. Um, so having the specific dates on here where you can say, well, this is in general November and decide what you want to go with. I think that's, you know, the best solution for us for now. Yeah, and it, it, well, it takes a certain amount of financial uh, maturity to start to realize that that's a better way of looking at it. But especially when we're able to pick ranges, then that'll make it make it that much more facile of, of a tool for that kind of stuff. Definitely. My, my um, clients, I've, I've prepared them. They're excited about this. So. Okay, good. Um, so next one, I've got my, you know, of course, notes out of order here. Um, but I already hinted to this one earlier. So coming soon is a notes area and then a custom date view. This is another option where it's not directly through us. It's a completely free add on. Um, so you would turn it on in settings. Um, notes is the ability to kind of like I showed you with the custom goals where you go and actually click in that cell and add the, the goal for that. Um, you would be able to type a little note with it. So um, a reason why you're changing it, you know, there's often times where like, I would love to go back eight weeks and I had a dip and I can't remember exactly why. Um, so just being able to jot that little note down with it is, is so helpful for context, I think. And then the custom date view is, is what I already alluded to earlier. So instead of just the number of weeks drop down, being able to actually select a custom date, maybe you know, rolling 13 weeks is obviously the default. That's what most people are using, but maybe even a year to date or quarter to date um, where you don't have to look at as many numbers if you're really focused on that. You know, Christina, and I'm excited about the notes. I mean, all these, all these things, but uh, uh, I've seen so many clients in their L10s or the quarters go back and look at numbers and go, what was that again? What, yeah. what happened then? I remember something happened, but what was the thing? And you think you're going to remember, but you don't. And if you're familiar with uh, things like Google Analytics, where they're able to put annotations on dates, it's very much like that. And it just gives you like, yep, I've already learned this. I don't need to go back and learn it again. Um, boom, it's right there. I can, I have access to it. Let's move on. Yes. Especially for the visionaries and the quick starts out there. Uh, <laughs> <who> <laughs> we have trouble with these things. What yeah. was that again? No, don't um, freak out. You know, we have a note on it. Yes, yes, exactly. 
And then this one, um, I put next quarter because we are not going to get to it this quarter, unfortunately, but it's going to be very fun um, formulas. So allowing a measurable to have the goal and actual autofill from other metrics on the scorecard. So I, you know, this is not us. This is just something I found and I liked. So I'm putting it here as just like a point of reference, but think of it as- Very giffy question. That's good. Yeah. Yes. You're selecting a different measurable. You're deciding if you're adding, subtracting, whatever those specific items, and then you're not going to fill in the number. You're just going to let it autofill from the other measurable. So a great example of this is probably, you know, go back to like the sales example I gave with client calls, you know, all three of us on the call need to put in a number each week, but we also want to see a team total. Um, so it's giving you that like roll up ability. So a couple specifications with the first launch of this that we're doing, we're having four options, the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Um, other thing is we're going to stick to the given column. Um, so it's only calculated in a specific time frame. So if we're looking at a certain week, you're only pulling from that certain week for right now. Um, and then you're only looking at the same interval. So when I say interval, I mean the weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual tab. We're only going to be looking at the measurables from that same. So again, getting back to like, we want your data to make sense. And so this is the way we can make it make sense for you guys right now. But of course, the one thing that I keep keep asking about was, can we have a comparison against last year, same week? Yeah, that's a great, great idea. Great point. That's one we don't have slotted for Not this, this quarter. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but I, I love the idea. Like that's, that's exactly where I want to get to. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, and then gets back to no manual, manual entry. You're telling the numbers where to pull from. And then the final aspect. We do, you know, we teach like you got to have the right numbers rather than the easy numbers, right? So this helps us get that much closer to easy numbers. Um, and one, one other question I had about this, Christine, was I, when I first saw this, does it have to be numbers that are already on the scorecard or could these be other measurables? Because uh, that, that's quite often what we want to see is a calculation against other measurables as opposed to the, the individual measurables themselves. Yeah, that's a great question because I, I envision this working where you're not restricted to just the scorecard you're looking at because right. it might be, you know, go back to the sales example. You've got your sales level 10 meeting. Everybody needs to enter their individual numbers. Right. Leadership team, we only care about the total. The if total. we've got yeah. questions, we'll go to that scorecard specifically. Yeah, so I think that, that will help clear it up for everybody. It's really about, this is that roll up function. This is when we start being able to really roll up things from different places and uh, give you that instantaneous view of what all that looks like. So I'm sure that'll be very popular, I'm sure. Good. All right. And then final one, I think this is my final slide, is just talking about the BTO goals. Um, so it, this is, again, another free add-on that you could turn on, but allowing your VTO to show more of your goal versus actual information when you're thinking about that three year, one year and 90 day aspect. So right now, if you go to your VTO, um, you can add your numbers and it's really just a free like entry field. So you're not really connecting it to anything. The measurables area, you pull in a measurable from the scorecard. Um, but we're, what we're looking to do is actually allow you to see goal versus actual as it relates to the VTO as well. Um, so it's all connected to the scorecard. Um, it allows you to see your weekly, I put weekly, but it could be any interval of measurable if you wanted to do a monthly, quarterly, or annual and compare it to the goal on the VTO. So if you think about it, um, you know, you've got your goal and your actual on the scorecard. Maybe you want to see how those two things relate. How far off are you from, you know, hitting your one year based on those two things? Because if you think about it, you don't only want your actual to line up you want your goal to line up too. You don't want to set your weekly goal at 10 and then be completely off because your yearly goal was, you know, 2012. Yeah. yeah, you're never going to get there. Yeah. So it'll be good to see those specific numbers against one another. I think when it comes to like the higher level, bigger picture goal setting you do on the VTO too. That's great stuff. All right. So yes, I was right. That was my last slide. Um, so next up, IDS. Uh, so I can see the chat going. So I'm hoping some great questions were coming through. Um, go ahead and keep submitting those right now. And, and as we're going through an IDS and talking, feel free to submit more. Michelle's there to pick them up. Um, 
and then yeah, a couple things don't forget in case anybody has to drop off, we are going to email out a copy of this webinar. Um, probably includes like some help articles or videos based on like the questions that are asked if we have any resources. So that's what I did last time is just included a couple common questions or things that we went over with help articles we already had. And then again, if you aren't a member or aren't using 90 yet, 30 day free trial, you can go to our sign up page um, to go ahead and access that right now. Do it. And uh, and I, I want to call out too, Christine. I know uh, we've been doing these these monthly now, and it seems like it's it's a lot of. I enjoy it. So if there's other topics people want to hear about, uh, uh, in particular, other parts of the tool set that they want us to to go deep dive on, you know, please let us know. That's a great thing to put in the chat, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll put that on the agenda. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, would love to hear what you guys want to cover next. Um, I did the scorecard this month because I know we had a lot of features and add-ons and things coming great out. Stuff in there, yeah. yeah, but would love to hear other areas you guys want to go into. All right. So the last we, time we just kind of went through the list. Should we do that again? Uh, let's, how many do we have total, Michelle? Did you, did you? Looks like 13. I checked off one that you guys hit already. There might be a couple others that you've touched on that'll just be quick, but. All right. So we, we got plenty of time. So we, we can they kept they kept coming last time, so I I was wrong last time when I said that. But let's go ahead and we can yeah. knock them all down. I think. Perfect. All right. Is measuring based on the average instead of the weekly number something on the roadmap? Um, average instead of the weekly number. Oh, to know whether it's uh, green or not. Is what oh, I'm, interesting. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so, um, um, I don't have it on for this quarter, like I said, um, but it's an interesting idea of, of being able to control where you want that on track, off track, at risk to come from. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I can definitely, I'll- That's a great you know suggestion. I'll, yeah, I'll just make these to-dos for myself because I think um, I think we might have a couple more of those without even reading the rest of the list. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if you want to put in the, in the chat a specific example of what that is, that makes it easier for us to make the- um, the story that we that we code against. So, yeah, right. <laughs> Did I get that right, Michelle? Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. Next up, how can we have a measurable in a team that also needs to be on the SLT scorecard, but it's owned by a leadership team member instead of the direct report? So, maybe I'll just go show this one. Yeah. Um, so here's an example. Um, it's owned by me. It's on a separate team, but if we want it, anybody on this team can come in and fill it out. But if it's also on the leadership team, that's where I'm going to see it and our team's going to review it. But the person that's directly filling that out doesn't need access to the leadership team. They just need access to that secondary team where it lives. Right. Or, yeah, or, or they, uh, oh, they own it in, and it's on their My90, right? That's the, am I understanding the question right? Yeah. The, the thing to remember is like when we're looking at the owner of the measurable, it's really like the person that truly is like, that's their responsibility. So right. when you're thinking about the person that might be, if it's somebody else filling out the number, make sure they have access to it. And then maybe just define that in the description area of, you know, understanding who's going to be entering that each that's week. That's right. For everybody that the, the pure reality is there's an, a, there's accountability and you know for the number that is the owner. And then you can delegate the filling out my scorecard for me every week and that's pretty common. Uh, mostly when you have people that uh, actually have better access to the data. So that's one of those other examples where you can create a separate team uh, that it just has access to all the numbers you need completed filled out by somebody as long as that person you're delegating to is in that team they can they can complete those entries um and then they, they show up in your scorecard definitely feel free as we're answering these if you feel like it didn't get answered like pop in the chat let us know if you want to elaborate anymore yeah well yeah we won't wait for you to, to tell us whether you're solved or not but yes. i think we got that one um okay we want to try if I want to track a measurable weekly and monthly, do I create it for one weekly and then use the existing measurable for the monthly? So this is kind of what we were speaking to where you can't have the same thing in both spots. So you would actually create two different measurables if you wanted to track the same thing at those two different intervals. 
So you'd create one in the weekly column that you could fill in every single week. And then you would fill in what you'd create a new one um, in the monthly column or in the monthly tab where you'd fill that in every single month because of that fact where, you know, the monthly cannot e or the weekly cannot equal the monthly. Um, that's our trailing four week solution that we kind of will be implementing. Yeah. What, what, so soon right now you have to actually have to do your own math and put it in as a separate measurable in the monthly, but soon you'll have the, 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 tra the trailing four, trailing 13, which will do the math for you. Right. And then uh, you could do in, in the future, you could do something different where you're adding things up in the monthly, you could add things up in, in by some, by some approach. Exactly. Yeah, so not, not perfect yet, but it's getting closer to perfect every day, which is all we can ask. 80% is good. Yes. Um, and love this question. I will put the office hours um, from last month in the email, the follow-up email for today. So that'll go out tomorrow or Friday. Um, that way you guys have access to it there. Yeah, yeah those, and those are all in on YouTube. You don't have to register for that once it's, once it's done. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. you have a default list of measurables that could be useful for a SaaS business. As a SaaS business that has built a scorecard, um, you know, it is an evolution. <laughs> we, and we don't, um, and there's certainly, but it, it's something that I, I know that some of my clients have used various other support mechanisms to go find that. So if you're not part of like an integrator group or, or uh, other, you know, there are other groups for, for people that are running on, on EOS, it's a great way to go get some, some community support on those things. And they're gonna have great, you know, build a peer network. We, we, we talk about at, at, at uh, Impact Architects, you know, peer impact, have some peers in the SAS, and SAS Academy is a great resource for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that you do have plenty of resources out there to help you figure out what they should be. Um, you're, you're, if you're working with an implementer, they can help talk you through it. But if you want some suggestions, go find some peers. Definitely. And I've even connected with some of our clients that are SaaS businesses that are just curious about yeah. how we run like our dev team um, and how they relate to EOS as well. So I'm always happy to have those conversations. You know, it's always interesting to hear what other people are doing. And we're in that spot where we're really meshing, you know, EOS and agile approach if you guys are doing that sort of scrum. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I think it's fun. Feel free to like reach out personally if you'd like to connect about that. Well, I think that sounds like a great experience share from you, Christine, that we can publish on, on the blog somewhere. Yeah, that's true. Hey, Christine, if you guys don't mind going back up to issue number two, I don't think um, we quite answered that question. Okay. We have a measurable in the team that also needs to be on the SLT scorecard, but it's owned by the leader in that team instead of the direct report. Yeah, so he, the follow-up was the team member is responsible within the department for a number, but their director is responsible for that number in the SLT. The director may not be entering the number, but their picture isn't used in the SLT scorecard and updating it creates a second measurable and now we have to enter it twice. Yeah, I think I think the main thing there is like really just deciding on a, a single owner. Like you can't That's have right. two owners of the measurable, even though you have two different meetings. Well stated, Christine. So yeah, I mean ultimately, if that's if the measurable really belongs to the uh, the, the person on the leadership team, that's who's the owner, and then the, the person that's filling it out is is it's delicate delegated to them. And even if they're doing the work on a regular basis, the really ultimate ownership. And that's why we're eventually we're going to have these have calculations because if there were two people doing that same thing and someone on the leadership team owned the combine, combined work of those two people, then that would be the thing that they're, they're owner of and the, and the two other ones would be, would be delegated down. But um, it's, it's a fine point uh, to get to, to, to purity on this, but ultimately that's right. It, it's really owned. If that's the case, the person on the, on the leadership team is the person who really owns that measurable. Yeah. And it can also, like, I know I have a measurable that works the opposite way where I want to see, um, you know, days in QA on our leadership scorecard to know, like, you know, if we're overstretching dev team members and things like that. And I don't own the measurable. I do want to see it, but our, you know, head of QA owns that and they're not on the leadership team. So you can still see measurables on whatever team you want to. It doesn't matter who owns them, but you do have right. to like get down to that one owner. Right. 
uh, let's see, can you change the default from 13 to eight? Um, I think we covered that, not yet. Not yet, yeah. And I think, yeah, when we get to like the custom selection, like that's when we'll start implementing some of those, you know, choose the rolling that you want to see. Rolling yeah, you're, you're, at this point, every time you go, you get to that part of the, of the L10, level, level 10 meeting, you're just changing it from 13 to eight. But, yeah. You know, we have, you know. But I hear you. Like, yeah, heard. Yes. <laughs> Um, let's see, would it be possible to sort the scorecard by the color on the left? I like that idea. We yeah, would like really have good. ones that are red at the top. I really like that. Um, you can't, but I like it a lot. So um, I will make it a to-do and talk to the team about it. Good Great suggestion. One. How do I add a goal, sales for example, that I can enter monthly amounts, target and actual and have those roll up to a quarter or annual or year to date? That's a great question. So that it's gonna be really that same concept of the trailing 13 weeks and just being able to implement that for monthly measurables as well. So we're kind of starting with the weekly concept. Um, you know, it's, you know, the first rollout of essentially that feature. And then you can think about it. Maybe we'll add a rolling 52 weeks to that. Maybe on monthly, you can do um, rolling 13 and, and 52. So that'll be kind of the evolution of that product. Yeah. There's, so just to make it really simple, there, there, right now, there is no calculation going on between the var various tabs, but that's coming. And that's what, that's what, we, what they've been working on. So uh, yeah. stay, stay tuned to this channel. It's going to be fun. Yes. Let's see, any plan to create an input to allow for different goals throughout the year? Um, for example, a headcount will change. Um, yes, so that's speaking to the um, import function. So yeah. right now I have it planned out where you can upload your template of goals for the whole year. Um, then even once we have like the custom date selector even, you could select dates in the future and then just manually change them that way too. Um, Excel's probably the fastest, but um, I'm considering both of those as options. Yeah, so definitely um, uh, right now, but every everybody could put a, a custom goal in an individual cell right now. Is that right, Christine? Yeah, exactly. It's the upload function, the one that's coming. So you could, if you have a predictable future year, that's going to be great for you. Yeah, exactly. All right, to be able to upload data, if so when. Um, Definitely aiming for end of the quarter. Um, we have upload functions on our side that our client success team uses. So we've kind of spent the past, yeah, I guess we've had it for about six months is a long time. Um, but now that we have the upload of scores ability and we're once we release the uploading of goals, that's kind of when we'll flip the switch and actually make it um, client facing on your side. So definitely looking to do this soon. I appreciate, Christine, that you guys don't release stuff until it's simple enough for people that aren't coders to understand how to use it and that's like it's an important part if i feel i feel confident with a tool when you let it out there i know how to use it and and, and it's and i and i get it so yeah. my, my clients thank you for that okay good <laughs> they want more features but they they like it when the feature's really done so yes yes got to balance the the fast and right approach right. Let's see, is there also a roll up that starts from the monthly and then rolls into quarterly or annual? Um, so yeah, this is kind of a similar question of, you know, not yet, but once we have the trailing four and 13 weeks out for the weekly measurables, then we can start taking that across the board and let you see your monthly measurables at that 13 and 52 week marks. Yeah, but, but you know, I, it's worth saying it, 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 it's great discipline to get out of the idea that, oh, I'm looking at January, then February and March. I know, you know, your banking relationships probably revolve around those things. But the reality with most co companies, you're always then having to calibrate for the fact that January is this long and February is this long. Uh, so it's, you know, the, the, the trailing four is really the way that, you know, is a much better way to run the business you're still going to have other measurables. You're going to have a, you know, the, the, the numbers you share with your bank. This doesn't necessarily solve that problem. This is about helping run the business and, and teasing out issues. And that's, and looking at the trailing four is a much more consistent way of doing that. Yeah, great point. All right, how do we turn on or access a free add-on? So we don't have any out quite yet. Um, so once we do, we will definitely announce that it will almost certainly be through the settings page and in the settings area. 
um, either configuration or like a whole separate tab for those add-ons. So I'll be sure to clearly communicate that when we do have those features launched. When you were working on the tool too, I got I to gotta put a shout out to the customer success team. That little chat box in the bottom there, I guess it's over that there. I can't do that. <laughs> I need to work on my Zoom skills, but uh, but that uh, hit that box. It's a, they do amazing work uh, to help you figure it out. They, they're they're always right there to protect you and save you. And uh, so if, when it comes to mind, it's just like like your issues list, don't let it linger. When the moment you think of it, ch check there and there and there and that way they've got the ticket. They're going to own it. They're going to get back to you and, and help you point you in the right direction. So um, and those and we and we want that information for figuring out how to how to better configure things and do things like webinars like this. Yep. All right, in addition to sending out the recordings, um, do they live anywhere in 90, um, only available at by asking the help desk? You know, that's a great point. I probably could put them in the help center so that it's easily searchable if you guys were to come in here um, and look for them within there. So um, great idea, I, I will definitely do that. Yeah, they're all on YouTube. So if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll just get a notification whenever we add one. But um, and I think they're, they're being added to the resource page as well, right? I think that's that's part of the. Yeah, I really the, like that. Yeah, um, love it. No, no, don't don't give me one more place to go. That's what I always hear. Yes. Um, not related to today's topic, but would it be possible to get a free limited account to use my family, a big family of eight, and I'd like to run it on EOS. Um, we have been doing um, family accounts just at a 75% discount. Um, so if you chat with our team, we can definitely get you set up with that. Um, I mean, feel free to send me feedback on how you feel about the 75% off versus free. Um, we probably, what, Michelle got like a handful of people doing it. So still trying to get yeah. feedback on it, I feel like, right? And if you, if you do a search too, if you don't, if you're not familiar with the, uh, there is a, a a version of the VTO, the family and the personal VTO that are out there. Uh, they're not pure. I don't teach those things, but uh, I know a lot of my good friends and, and, and uh, use them quite a bit and uh, um, find it to be really valuable. So nice. All right. There are a couple more if you want to. Yeah. All right. That's the mistake we made last time, Michelle. We didn't refresh that. Oh, we're all, oh, oh no, good. I hesitate to say this, but I am very excited because I am going to be testing again this week, the multiple people joining a meeting function where yes. everybody can join. It updates real time as people add issues. So I'm super amped about that. <laughs> ne maybe next webinar we can use that and we'll just see the issues pop up as people add them. Perfect. Yeah. Um, new to EOS N90 from what I can see, it's great. Agree. Um, I'd love to have monthly demos so we can ensure we get the most of the software. Um, great. Yeah, I, I plan on doing these every month. Um, what I've been doing is just quick in-app pop-ups. I might talk to our marketing team about making a, you know, you can sign up to get just auto-registered for them each month. So oh, maybe right. that's something we can do. Yeah. 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 So um, I'll figure out the details of that. Maybe I can do that in the next few days and then include it in the follow-up email as well. So um yeah, I mean, we do, and we do have month, uh, various newslettery type things that go out uh, by email as well. So, um, but I love that. Just I love it too. Join the join the the, the office hours tribe. I love it. Yeah. All right, I have a team member not on leadership who owns a rock, but because they aren't a member, I place the rock under their manager. Is that right? Um, you know, what would you do, Jim, for one of your clients? Um, well, so we do have, we have rocks, uh, at the company rock, you know, we have company rocks and we have department rocks and for us departments is anything that's a group of people that is, it isn't the leadership team, uh, or isn't the company. And then there's individual rocks. Um, and the, the personal accountable for it at the highest level that rock is really due is probably the, the best owner of it. I mean, I, uh, in my, in my own businesses, I've, done most of the work and taken most of the, of the milestones for rocks that were actually owned by the person I was reporting up to. So, um, uh, and that they, they owned making sure, because it, remember we had one last quarter where I was, there was someone that had a company rock uh, on the leadership team, but there was, 
really not their day by day work to go do it. So, but it was their name on the rock. I owned uh, a lot of the uh, uh, the milestones. So that's one of the reasons you, you can do that. But the difference between who owns the rock because and then who owns the milestones uh, is handy for that. Because um, once you remember, remember, rocks aren't about who you know, the person who owns them isn't the one that's necessarily doing all the work. If, if that's the case, that it, it's probably a lower level rock than that. But if, if it's really, if it's a company priority, then someone in the leadership team should own, own making sure that gets done and making sure that people are doing it, working on it. So it's, it's accountability isn't, isn't labor. It's they're, they're different. Um, and so, and that, I know that can be confusing sometimes, but it's really about who owns, who has to represent that at that level. Because the whole point, end of the, end of the rock period, we're all looking at each other and saying, is it done? Is it really done? And someone's got to own, yes, it's done. So. Yeah, and just to show what you're speaking to is, this is a great example. I own this specific rock on this team, but I've delegated out certain aspects to Spencer and whoever I want to, and I can assign them yeah. some due dates within here too. So that's how you can execute that within 90. Um, but if you yeah. have a implementer, definitely chat with them about that. Definitely. I mean, this is, yeah, this is a, you know, you know, you're, you're obviously getting deeper into, into, into EOS and we're running it. If you work with an implementer, they, they'd love to, to answer these questions. If you're not, you know, contact uh, EOS for a while, they'll, they'll help you connect with somebody that can answer those questions and they'll, you know, give you some help first time and see if uh, see if you make sure you've got uh, a solid understanding of how to, how all that works. Definitely. Um, let's see. For the averages issues for my church, we have spikes at the beginning of the month um, to make the weekly goal difficult. But you know, your rolling average make it better measure for us. Yeah. So um, I think yeah, the auto changing the goals in there right now um, can probably help you with those like week to week spikes. Um, and then ideally, if you do know, you know, these weeks in the whole year are going to be like this percent above, like you could put that into that Excel spreadsheet and then just load it in. Um, that way, it's easier. You've already got the numbers in there. Maybe you just need to do some like small tweaks week to week instead of like rethinking your numbers every time. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I've, I've got clients that are um, in the nonprofit space whose a lot of their income comes from events that go on. So those events happen at certain times. And that's, that was actually my thought about the, you know, week, you know, week to week versus last year. And, mm -hmm. uh, but they have, they have some idea about, I don't expect much money in this week, but I expect a lot on that week. So uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be handy for that. How can you account for ramp up type goals without making it tedious by changing the goal each week? So this is kind of, you know, yeah. what we were just speaking to. So a well time. We question. hear your pain. Yes, exactly. Um, we want to double our revenue this year. Yeah. So this is the exact kind of thing we're looking to solve in that Excel uploadability. So you've probably got it all mapped out. You've probably got um, your vision for the year. So just being able to load it in really easily and have it, um, auto pull in each week is definitely going to help you guys out a lot. And just, and just so I'm clear, uh, Christine, so right now you can change it in an individual cell per week, what the goal is. Then we're going to have this upload function where you can upload many weeks in the future for what it's going to be. Um, are we going to at any point have like this, they're looking at a calculation. They know they got double sales this year. Will it be calculable in the, in somewhere in the roadmap where it says, Hey, I need to, here and here and we're going to do the tween frames for you uh, yeah it's interesting i was uh, i've been kind of playing around with that idea um it's hard to like really execute on or think through yeah. until we get a lot of this stuff out because i think in the meantime um being able to do those calculations in excel is really easy and then you've got the excel document that you can just load into here so that's kind yeah, of I mean, and I guess I, I would say to people too, you're always in a validating it because you're going to say, well, we expect you to do this much. Oh, but that's Thanksgiving week. Never mind. It's going to be this. And, mm -hmm. you know, but you still have to rationalize it out to come up with the right number at the end. So, uh, you know, I think the upload will be powerful. That'll be great. Yeah. And I just wanted to come back here to show it again. You know, the custom goals is is great right now because I can go back. I can look at this week and I see right. and say, actually the goal is this. But where you start to get into trouble is saying, well, I know next week I want it to be, you know, 30 and then it's going to go back down to 15. So that's where the upload is really going to be helpful is the forward forecasting instead of just the backward reaction as we're looking at this. 
Awesome. All right. Um, just got to that one. After we can upload data via the UI. Um, I had been waiting until somebody asked about integrations. I almost brought it up <laughs> earlier because I was surprised nobody had asked. Yeah, yet. yeah. Um, yeah, we actually are working with on Zapier specifically. So um, it's one of those things where we're working on all the endpoints right now. I don't know if that means anything to anybody out there. Um, but then we'll work on Zapier um, probably starting like right after this quarter. But essentially, we're just getting our own ducks in a row internally right now so that we're ready to start with that development. So part of that will be being able to upload scores in automatically from other systems. If you guys are familiar with Zapier, they work with a ton of other SaaS products out there, which will be very helpful. Um, but yeah, that is that is in our plan. So, so the hack, just, just as, as the hack that most of my clients use, if they have additional sources of data that are important right now, they're building into the L10, um, additional web locations because you can build that, put that right in the meeting so that as you're going through, you look at the scorecard and the next one can be some other, uh, sorry about that, some other uh, uh, site that gives you data and you just go keep, you can just have all those stacked up. Definitely. Yeah. So you can add other meeting sections in. Um, yeah, just, just, pull the, and just pull that site, put it right inside the meeting and you can track how much time you spend looking at it and tell yourself, oh my God, don't spend that much time looking at it. And, uh, uh, yeah. But then you can also, you know, be, be grabbing the the uh, issues from that data, which is really what the why we're doing it in the first place. Yeah, but as a Zapier user, I am um, very eager for this. Very excited. <laughs> uh, let's see. Would it be possible to set annual or quarterly goals that have rolling thirteen week breakdowns evenly? Um, you know, I hadn't gone there yet of going, you know, from the highest interval back down. Um, it's an interesting idea because I guess you could just divide by whatever you needed to for that number. So I'll definitely put it on our list to start thinking about, especially as like we're getting done with this evolution and going into um, internally, we keep calling this scorecard 2.0. Um, so maybe this is scorecard 3.0. 3.0, yeah. Yes. So put it, in, put it in the, in the roadmap. It's, it's just, yeah. yeah, I'll put it on my issues list to talk about with everybody. Right. Right, and it's worth saying that you know the, the, the notion of, of measurables and scorecards in, in EOS isn't that you're not gonna have data anywhere else. It was never meant to replace all your data. It's just about making sure you have the right data to, to discern issues during your level 10 meeting and to keep track of whether how you're doing for eventually looking at the, you know, for your quarterly conversations and things like that. So um, I don't think we're ever gonna be the one place for your entire data ocean. I don't think that's us. Right. Um, I don't think that is. What do you think, Christine? I don't know. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I think having that um, distinction between like what's really, really helpful for the management. Business, yeah, and your management um, yeah. versus, hey, if you need to go find the details behind this one item, you might need to go like look into that specific platform or wherever it's coming from. Yeah, I mean, have and having other things baked into the L10 so you can go do the forensics when you need to is fine. Mm -hmm. you know, but um, don't spend your time looking at things you don't need to look at. There you go. Uh, let's see. I'm often changing goals, raising them, um, which put the older ones in red. Yeah, so this is actually um, exactly what I'm looking to do next. So right now when you change the goal, it changes all of your past weeks. So we are looking to implement it so that when you change the goal, you can say, only for future weeks. And it would essentially lock in all of your past weeks of data. Um, so it would it would auto adjust. I spoke to that. I think it was like a, a tiny little um, bullet point. I probably should have elaborated on more um, when we're talking about changing goals. So that's the, we wanna be able to easily change your default goal um, for all scores moving forward. So that would be on the scorecard. I update the number. It doesn't have to change for everything just for the next next moving forward dates. It's interesting how powerful the red, yellow, green really is for people. You know, it, it, it mattered. It, it, I yeah. feel, you know, I want everything to be green. So is Michelle. Michelle wants everything to be green. Yeah. I mean, especially <laughs> when I see it uh, on the My90 page, I'm one of those people. I'm, I'm very competitive. I get yes. caught up in the numbers. You know, yeah. I'm going to look and see every week. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to see any red there. You don't want to meet Christine on the field hockey field. It's it's you're going down. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> um, let's see. Do you have a website link for the paid add-ons? Everything is free, so nothing is going to be um, paid for. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, completely free add-ons. It would just be toggles on your settings page. Um, so yeah, completely fine there. Everything I showed you today, nothing would be a charge. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I hear you that, that you know it's probably there are things that show up and you don't know they're there until you find them. Uh, and but that's you know that's part of the the reality is where there are new features being added and we don't want to mess up how you're operating it right now. So um, it's the nature of the beast. So we keep trying to find new ways to reach out, inform yeah. you so you can make informed decisions. Yes. We say things you decide. So jealous of how efficient <laughs> you guys are running EOS and 90. Great. Um, this is the best QA I've ever seen. Wow. Okay. More of a love note than an IDS. But uh, thank you. Sure. I'll take it. Thank <laughs> it. I feel the love. Thank you very much. It's from yeah. Scott. Oh, oh okay. great. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> he's ever seen that's nice we had a great uh, session this week these guys are great <laughs> um might be one of my favorite support teams wow that's very nice as well thank you all real people in there so they always and, and they are amazing so yeah thanks for, for doing the shout out because it's it's a um it's an amazing team uh they they really my customers love them and give me full credit for how great they are so you know i can't I, I can't, I have no impact on it whatsoever. I just enjoy them as well, so. Awesome. Um, I think it would be valuable to an, enable a department to ask questions or has issues of another team to show up like maybe headlines when it's answered by that team then it goes back to the department to ask that question. Wow, what a well-timed feature request for something I'm already planning. So thank you for the setup. Um, so <laughs> I mentioned that Christine's um, always like that. You come up with something you think is genius, and she's already like, "Oh yeah, it's 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 going to be available in three weeks." So, so going, Christine, what we're planning is after the multiple people join a meeting takes effect. Um, this is one of those things that'll come out right after that. Essentially, right now, um, what this person is saying is, you can switch the team that the issue is on, which is fine. But then you lose visibility. Maybe if I'm on the leadership team. To the answer. I, yeah, I switch it to marketing. Now I kind of lose sight of it. What we're actually going to have is a send option. So I want to send this issue to another team. It drops down into like a separate section here where I can see the issues I've sent to other teams. It lets the other team see it on their issues list. They can prioritize it like normal. It has a little like token tag on here that says, you know, from the leadership team. Um, and then they can send it back to us when they're done. So instead of like checking it off as complete, like you would normally do, it's a send back option. Um, so then we can see whatever they worked on and talk about it again. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a great way of avoiding additional ad hoc meetings, which is really, which is, you know, pure and, and I, the ideal within, I, within EOS. And I know Michelle, we've done that plenty where we sent stuff to other teams. Uh, yep. You know, it's great to get an answer back in this, in a right there in the tool. So, you know, it got done. Definitely. Yeah. Great answer. So, great question. Great answer. Great question. Yeah. I think it's it's that one. And then um, the ability to merge two issues is the other right. one. Yeah. Um, so being able to like combine these two things if it's essentially the same thing. So right, right. Yeah. A lot of USI is asking me about well, how about keep kill combine? I need better mm -hmm. combined tools. Like, yes, we have data. keep and kill. The combine is what we've been missing. Yeah, yeah. So. On, on its way. Great. Yeah. Um, let's see, do I have any other ones? A couple more. Cool. When will the upload of goals be available? Um, we just started working on it. So I'm thinking next couple of weeks, um, you know, probably, you know, three would be my optimistic thing to say. Um, maybe four to five is realistic, just depending on what I see back as first results, but definitely within the quarter. Um, the trailing four and 13 weeks for weekly measurables is sooner than that. So I know that's already been in progress with our team. So that's probably one of the first things up that you guys would see. That's great, Christine. Um, uploading all goals too far in advance could be a nightmare, keeping it updated or changing if needed. I'd rather have a new goal and validate turn red from past numbers. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's the nice thing about the goal upload is it's keep completely up to you. Maybe you only want to go a month or a quarter forward. So you don't have to do the whole year. It's going to be up to you with how much data you end up putting in there. Um, 
So yeah, I, I, the um, goal, the invalidated goal is interesting. Like maybe you want to set it to be TBD. Um, so that's kind of an interesting idea to play around with that I can definitely bring back to the team if you want to set it like real time the week before or something like that. Yeah, but you're but you're also working on the on the not invalidating the the past one. So you're going to get yeah. both. Yeah. Uh, and you just have choices to make is how you want to approach it. But with exactly. her, I mean, I think I guess it, it, it is interesting because if you go go, you know, uh, measure by measurable, people have a lot of things they'd like to see and how they want to think about it. And, you know, Christine, you did a great job of keep adding things that, that kind of knock off the big chunks. So, um, yeah, doing our best to add while also keeping simple. So, um, but it, yeah, but it's yeah. worth thinking through it. I mean, that, you know, it's part of the journey of thinking through it and coming up with your goals as opposed to the, you know, the magic machine run by Christine telling you what it is. So. Yes. <laughs> um, in data monthly, is there a way to change the default from 13 to a different default number? Um, same answer, not right now. It'll be the same as when we have the custom date selection in there where you can choose um, you know, a default number of weeks. So that'll be a part of that free add-on that we have that you can um, change that number of months. Those defaults. Great. Let's see, we got any more. I think that's it. Nope. All right. All right. Well, that's great. Well, everyone, great questions. And uh, yeah. thanks for being a, an engaged uh, group. Um, do we know what our, our next one's going to be about, Christine? Um, I don't. I was thinking maybe meetings because I already hinted at those couple of things about meetings that are coming out. So yeah. maybe going in depth into the level 10. Um, but like Jim said at the beginning, would love feedback if there's certain areas you guys want covered. So um, please let me know. I'll send you the recording from this, obviously, but also for the feedback call that we did in January, too. Great. Yeah. Well, Michelle, Christine, thank you so much. Great to spend time with you today. Yeah, good to hang out. Um, go sign up for 90 if you don't already have an account. And if you do, um, thank you for being here and loved hearing your feedback. So thanks for attending. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See ya.